This goes out to all movie theater chains across America. There are people like me who love to go to the movies, who just love movies in general and like to go to the theater, a nice theater, and see a film. And a lot of movie theater chains are kind of wondering why they are losing business, why not many people are going to see movies as much as they did, you know, say 20, even 15 years ago. True, part of it is because people do have huge ass TVs that can stay home and watch a movie in perfect, you know, uh, 4K, 8K, whatever is coming out next. But the real reason, I think we all know what it is, and it's not that big of a fucking secret. It's because the movie-going experience is turned into one of the most hellish experiences you can have. So let's start with an average night out at the movie. Let's start with, this is what happens usually when I go to a movie. This is a, a good movie-going experience for me is I reserve tickets ahead of time. Okay, so I've got seats. I get there, I pay for parking sometimes. I'm sorry, if you have a movie theater, you should provide me a fucking lot. I should not have to pay for parking on top of the ridiculous movie ticket prices nowadays. Fine. Get parking. You gotta pay about, what, 13, 15 bucks now for a fucking movie? All right, great. You go into the movie, the fucking um, concessions are ridiculous. Now I know, theaters make most of their money. My dad used to work in that kind of, that area. Most theaters do not make money off, well, all theaters don't make money off the movie at all. They, they make most, almost all of their money predominantly at the concession stand. So I get they have to jack it up. But really, for like $7 for a bottle of water? I mean, jack certain things up. Jack like the jumbo popcorn and making making everybody a fucking thousand pounds or something. Jack that up to $15 a fucking barrel for these people. But my water, when I'm trying to be fucking reasonably healthy, you're going to fuck me over? Thanks. I appreciate it. Okay, so then you get to the, I get into the theater. What's the first thing I'm treated to? A slideshow. Now, I'm not so bothered by that. The slideshow, you know what the thing is, where they advertise like local restaurants and all this shit on this ridiculously like slow and insane slideshow they insist on putting on the screen because something always has to be on the screen to distract you or whatever. Well, I can ignore that. I can be on my cell phone. Okay, fine. Well, then comes first look. And I don't, people know what first look is, I think at least in America. First look is this bullshit like all access Hollywood program that they put on before a movie where it's like, we're going to take you behind the scenes of this fucking shitty sitcom nobody's ever going to watch and we're going to tell you secrets with the cast here. Who do you, do you know who this person is? We don't, but they're mildly attractive so we're going to put them on in front of you and have them ramble on incessantly. And by the way, we're going to show this one particular interview about a thousand times before even real commercials start. First fucking look, it does not trying to make me feel special, goddamn it, because it's not true. It's a goddamn lie. <laughs> First look. We're gonna tell you a secret behind the scenes of this new History Channel document. No, you're not, you're a commercial. Fuck it. Okay, so that goes on incessantly, and I have to hear this on a fucking loop, even if I am looking at my cell phone. All right. Now the movie supposedly starts. No, it doesn't start. What happens is there's a thousand BMW commercials and co-commercials, and then this is the one that chafes my ass the most. I'm going to escape shit. I don't want to hear about other people's problems at a fucking movie theater. When you have Jennifer Aniston and all these motherfuckers begging me for money from the St. Jude's Children's Hospital, a great cause, uh, they should get everything they ever wanted. I don't want to hear it in a movie. And I don't want to have celebrities asking me for money. You give the money. You make a billion times more than I will probably ever make. Fuck you. How dare you? Have a regular person ask me for it. Then maybe I'll listen a little bit. Don't have fucking Sean Penn and Jennifer Aniston fucking talking to me about it. You really should give money. And it's really important. To give. You give money. Make three movies. Cut your salary. Just say, you know, I'm not taking the salary. I'm going to do donate this entire paycheck I get for the next three movies I make to St. Jude's Children's Hospital. You know how much money they'll get? A lot more than, you know, trying to get like five bucks off me who's barely making it. Okay, fuck you. And then there's, uh, like I said, the fancy car commercials. And finally... There are the announcements that begin before the trailer, which I really don't get. Like, it's like, there's no cell phones, there's no this. That's kind of like, would make you think the movie's going to start. No, then the trailers start. Now, I love the trailers. I'm one of the few people, I think, who doesn't, I don't care if there's 20, 30 minutes of trailers. I'm into it. You know, there's a couple trailers I'm not going to be into, but, you know, uh, the ones I am, cool. I, I'm entertained by those. Those are things I may or may not see, so I get it. And then that ends. <laughs> and then what happens is there's more announcements about exits, about be quiet on your cell phones, don't talk to anybody. But the thing that kills me the most, and this has become a thing in the past 10 years, is when the movie supposedly starts, it starts like this. Um, random house pictures, and then like a goat jumps across the screen, sponsored by 
goatee fuck face pictures. And then there's like a house spinning around associated with house spinning around productions. And it keeps showing you these fucking little scenes and you keep thinking the movie's starting. No, it's just somebody else sponsoring this person, sponsoring that person, sponsoring this person. There's apparently now about a billion companies that bring you one fucking movie. And they all have to make cute little like, I don't know, like graphic images before the film. I mean, how many times have you seen that? You sat at a theater, it's like, you know, diddly fuck pictures presents a dildo spitting production. I mean, <laughs> in association with uh, gaping vagina fuck films. I don't, it just goes on and on into the fucking beginning of the movie. And then you have the balls when they start the movie to be like, now Paramount Pictures presents, what the fuck? Who are these other motherfuckers I just sat and watched for like 10 minutes? With their little fucking fake slideshows and shit telling me it was sponsored. Uh. Now, that's a good movie-going experience. Why is it? I'm, it could be a good movie-going movie, movie going experience is because I have not mentioned any crowd shit yet. I have not mentioned anybody acting the asshole. I have not ma- mentioned anybody on their cell phone with a thousand little lights and, you know, showing their friend their Facebook posts while I'm trying to watch a goddamn movie and then they're sitting there chatting about it. I'm not mentioning, you know, people blatantly just being dicks and then if you say something about the person being a dick and they come back at you it never works out to the way where they're like oh i'm sorry i didn't know i was making so much noise oh forgive me i know you're trying to enjoy this wonderful wonderful film um let me be quiet right now matter of fact let me move if i am going to use my cell phone i'm going to go out in the lobby never happens what always happens they want to confront you and shit they want to fuck you who the fuck are you to tell me so then if you do do the responsible thing and go get i don't know a manager or something you have to worry about what's going to happen after the movie, even if you do get them kicked out. First of all, you won't get them kicked out. The manager, this, some little acne-faced team will wander in and be like, you shouldn't do that anymore. And, well, we have to see them do that thing that you said. And, they'll, you know, they are the worst at trying to catch people in anything, like talking or something. Because I've had this happen where I've said to somebody, you know, don't talk or basically shut the fuck up. I went and complained about it. They're like, okay, we'll try to catch them in the act. And they just stand there in front of the movie, like, screen practically, like, like looking, of course the person's not gonna do it right then. They see your stupid asses right there. They wait till you leave, then they start up with their bullshit again, and I gotta deal with it. And now, since they know I've squealed on them, what's gonna happen? I might have to fight a fucker after the movie, and that's gonna be my fun night out. <sighs> so the solution to this is, and I've had plenty of bad movie going experiences, and I've seen a lot of what I've said in action. I went to see Paranormal Activity Part Two. Yeah, it was Part Two, and this woman was rightfully complaining about these people. She's on the other side of the theater who are making so much noise, wouldn't stop talking. And I'll give this bitch credit. She had a huge set of balls on her. She's like, you better shut the fuck up or I'm going to go get the manager. And this black chick who, she was arguing with the black chick, said, I don't give a bitch. You get that. Tell me what I say. I'm scared. So I'm going to say what I want to. I'm going to say what I want to. So this woman's like, okay, fine. Say what you want to. She goes to get the manager. And this movie theater I actually like because they actually kicked her out the first time. They're like, listen, Stop this bullshit. We're, you know what? Fuck it. You're just because they were arguing with the guy who came to talk to them. So they're basically like, get the fuck out. We're not going to have you ruin everybody else's movie going experience. I was glad they kicked those fuckers out. But cut to the end of that story. After the movie is over, I'm walking outside with my brother and I pass the same people. And keep in mind, they got kicked out relatively early in the movie, like about, I'd say, 20 minutes into the film. And the movie was about, I'd say, an hour and 30 minutes, maybe an hour and 20 minutes. When I got outside, they were waiting outside to beat this bitch's ass. They did. They went nowhere. They had that much time to kill and that much resentment at being told not to be a fucking dick that they were going to beat her fucking ass. Now, I, don't, I didn't stay around to see if they did or didn't, but probably. I was in a seat of Chucky. I saw a shitty movie where I didn't think I would have any problem because I didn't think anybody would even be there. I am sitting with a friend, and all of a sudden, this big fat bitch who's about a thousand pounds, I mean literally like a thousand pounds, sits in front of me, and because she's so fucking fat, her ginormous fat knocks into my knee because it's those shitty seats. It wasn't even like stadium seating. It was just, you know, they didn't want to change the seats from 1972. So she hits my fucking knee. And, okay, first time I'm like, ow, you know, whatever. Second time I'm like, God damn it, I wish people watch where the fuck they keep moving their seatbelt. This bitch thought... She just started ranting and raving. I'm like, I really don't care what the fuck you have to say. You're, you know, you're hitting my knee every five seconds. So then what does she have to do? It's what all fucking little bitches like to do. They get their fucking ghetto ass boyfriends involved in it. He comes over. Hey, babe, what, what he said to you? What he said to you, man? He was some Puerto Rican loser. And sorry, he was Puerto Rican and he was like a loser. 
<laughs> but he was just like, hey, what do you say to you? And so she's like, oh, he's he's being mean to me. He's calling me names. So that motherfucker turns over to me. He's like, I will choke the fuck out of you right now if I have to. So here's what goes through my head. There's a couple options. I could beat his ass or, you know, try to beat his ass. I don't know. He might be tougher than me. Fucking a lot of people are. <laughs> but whatever. I'm not going to be a bitch about it. I wanted to kill this motherfucker. But what are the possible outcomes of me even say I succeed and thoroughly whoop his ass in front of his stupid fat bitch and she gets to cry fat tears of, you know, cholesterol or whatever, like roll down her fat fucking face. Um, I go to jail. I don't get to see the movie and I don't even get my money back. So I go outside. I'm like, I'm going to do it. You know, I'm going to do it the white people way and complain. So I go outside. I'm like, excuse me. There is a hoodlum in there. You know, I, I acted totally like different than I really do. So I had him pulled out with me. They talked to him which did absolutely nothing because what he proceeded to do was start uh, switch seats with her and keep knocking into my fucking knees on purpose. So I started knocking in his seat and I could see this is going to be a violent confrontation. This was, this was so setting up to be a violent confrontation. So I went outside and complained again. I said, I'm not having a good time here. I said, you either refund my money or put me at the next show because I'm going to kill this motherfucker. That's what's going to happen. And I know he's the dumb type of motherfucker who wants to meet me in the parking lot. And it wouldn't have been good. But I had to take my own time out, go to the next show, wait in another line because of this fucking ignorant motherfucker and his fat bitch and the fact that nobody in the movie theater would do a goddamn thing. How do we solve all these problems? Get ushers back. Hire like, you know, security or bouncers you would for clubs. If they see somebody texting, if they see somebody talking, pick them the fuck up, throw them right the fuck out. I, if a theater did that, I would be at that theater consistently. They would always get my business. Always, never a question. I would not even go to another theater. But these theaters have the balls to sit around and wonder why nobody's going to the movies. You're not helping. You're not doing your fucking job. Do your fucking job. Get some security in that motherfucker. Get big fuckers. Don't give me the teenager, you know, with the little fucking dust mop who wanders through there every now and then looking totally disinterested because he's 15 and doesn't even want to be there himself. I get that. Get big motherfuckers. There are plenty of big motherfuckers out there or somebody who knows martial arts or something and have them posted in each theater. If they see some shit popping off, just have them sit with the public. Have them sit. Have them watch the fucking movie a thousand times. They're getting paid. What the fuck do they care? And have them throw people the fuck out who are acting up. I could deal with the commercials. I could deal with the high prices. I could deal with all the other shit if you would get rid of the assholes. Please do this. And then I'll be at your theater more. Just had to get that out.